in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and strong what height of love what depths of peace where fear are still and striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground from through the fierce as drought and storm what height of love what depths of peace when share us still and striving seas my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand What depth of love, what art of peace When fear I steal and strive and see My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ what height of love, what depths of peace, when shall I still and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, yet in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, fell through the fiercest drought and storm. What height of love, what depth of peace, what fear of steel and striving sea. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. And I know my Redeemer lives, I know he's not far from me The world will know that my Redeemer lives. And I know my Redeemer lives. And I know you are not far from me. Yet. But I know when you will arise, the world will know my Redeemer lives. When you will arise, the world will know. It bears the of Jesus, I speak from my heart. He will always be with us if we do our part. That's not in this wide world can pleasures afford. There's peace. And contentment in serving the Lord. He pays the self, Jesus. I speak from my heart. He will always be with us if we do our part. There's nothing this wide world can pleasures afford. There's peace and contentment in serving the Lord. Our love is for better than it is of the earth. 
now serve him more truly than ever before. I'll do as if it's me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my goal. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die. And when I remember the place where you took me from, I will never be shy to say no thank you. And I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I'm grateful for the future I see. Lord, I remember, Lord, I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you, Lord, I thank you for where I am today. I see you doing, I see you doing, a new thing. your seat. Break your Bible to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 2 to verse 7. Luke chapter 5, we we'll have a custom. We have a custom. I'll read one verse, read the next one. When we get to seven, we'll read it together. And saw two sheep. Okay, let's start from verse one. Let's do one to seven. It came to pass that the, as the people pressed on him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Verse two. Verse three. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Verse 4. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word... I will let down the net. Verse 6. Let's do verse 7 together, everybody. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the sheep, so that they began to sink. So that they began to sink. Out of labor into favor. Out of labor into favor. It's a prophecy that someone is moving out of labor into favor. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. There are people, all they have known in life is struggle. And when you are too used to a pattern of life, you think that is all there is to life. 
When you stay too long on the spot, you start looking like the spot. There are people that are so used to poverty that prosperity to them is not real. There are people that mock results and mock answer because they are used to questions. There are people that will never believe a testimony because they are not used to things changing. People work based on the construct of their mind and the activities of their life. The Bible says that they put pressure. They pressed on him to hear the word. That's the first thing. The word of God is a platform for your achievement in this world. Anything the world can give you, this world can't offer you. They pressed on him to hear the word. Anything the world can't give you, this world can't offer you. When you put pressure on the world, you get pleasure in this world. Everything God will give to anyone connected to him through Jesus is tied to the world. Peter toiled and toiled and he caught nothing. The end of a day is not the end of a story. That a vehicle stopped doesn't mean journey has ended. A vehicle can stop for people to come out and light and ease themselves, can stop people to buy stuff, but the journey continues. That you lose a battle doesn't mean you have lost the war. Don't conclude so easily on life because of your experiences. Peter toiled all night. So there are, there are people who have toiled and toiled and nothing is happening. Don't give up because of what you see. Press on because of what you expect. Can I repeat that to you? Don't give up because of what you are seeing. There is something more than what is happening. Can I say this to you? Don't ever forget this. What is written is senior to what is happening. What is written is older than what is happening. So it doesn't matter what is happening. Focus on what is written. God said it, believes it, and that settles it. The Bible says, he toiled all night and he caught nothing. He toiled all night and he caught nothing. He toiled all night and he caught Not because Peter was a novice. Peter was a man who had a sheep, sir. Not just a net. And he got that through that industry. For a man who was a fisherman in the fishery business, to grow to a level of owning a sheep means he had expertise. But there's a level where experience, expertise fails. So you must understand that. But look at this. Look at this now. This is going to bless you. The Bible says he saw two sheep. Jesus was coming. He saw two sheep. And they were both empty and vacant and stranded. He went into Simon's sheep. What did Simon do to attract it? Nothing. He saw two sheep. But he picked... Aya. Simon did nothing to qualify. Hear me and hear me well, everyone under the sound of my voice. Your current level of comfort is not a function of your qualification. Favor found you. You are not the best among the rest. You were selected by favor. What did Peter do to attract Jesus to his sheep? Nothing. When it dawns on you that you are a product of favor, entitlement dies. What did Peter do? No wonder Paul was screaming in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. I am what I am by the grace of God. What did Peter do to attract that kind of favor? The Bible says, in fact, the other, the other, the other two people, uh, uh, sons of Zebedee, if you read Matthew chapter 4, you will notice that they were with their father by their boats. They were washing their nets. Their father was there with them. So if anybody should be, have been attracted, it should be those guys because Jesus saw a family. But yet he went for that man who was stranded, who was alone, who had no family member, who had nobody around him. He picked him. Favor found you. And if you must assess higher dimensions of favor, more than the current level, you must continually program your mind that favor is the key to exploit. Now watch this. The Bible says he toiled all night and caught nothing. All night. Now let me explain to you. 
Now, that was the Sea of Galilee. The place called Gennesaret means the city of riches. It was by the Sea of Galilee. And those days, the Sea of Galilee, the fish only come out at night. Because the fishermen, fishermen rather, are alert during the day. So the fishes only come out at night. So they were very strategic. The fishermen were very strategic that if you must get fishes, you must come at night. That is when the fishes come out, when they know that the fishermen have gone to rest. So Peter had the strategy, but yet it failed. Strategy fails. When you want to walk with God and live a holy life with strategy, you will fail. Have you heard the message in church? You, you, powerful message. The word of God hit your spirit. And you say, from today, I'm, I'm going to live holy. I'm going to live holy. You're walking out of the church. That your neighbor, you know your neighbor is the only temptation in your life. So I'm just going like that. You are quiet. Sit today. I'm living a life of righteousness. No more quarrel. And that's why you join inside your house. Your neighbor is passing by. They go, they dig it, dig it. They go, they push. Them go, they dig. And you're like, Father, help me, please. And they come and see the front of you. Carry a chair, put the front of your door. <laughs> Church people. They go, they dig in, dig in. They go, they push. And you're like, Jesus. After a while, when you can't take it, say, Jesus, please, I'll come back. <laughs> Let me show this boy and this woman that I can't take nonsense. That's strategy. That's strategy. It takes the working of the spirit for you to see that thing and it irritates you. You feel, you feel too tired to respond. It takes, it takes the working of the spirit. It, Peter toyed all night. In other words, all the fishes that day, they went on strike. All of them went on strike. Do you know what it means? That he caught nothing. The Bible needs to say he caught few. He caught all the fishes agreed. The fishes agreed that day. That all of all. You think it's only, only students and workers that strike? Fishes strike. All of them agreed that today we are on strike. We will not appear. So he caught not a thing. And Jesus came. And Jesus said to him, launch out. And Peter said, I've tried everything. Do you know? Do you know? God is aware of what you cannot do, yet he tells you to do something. God is aware of what you are unable to do. God does not see your inability. He sees your ability. Okay? So what happened? Jesus says, launch out. Peter could have folded his hand and start complaining. The problem we have a lot of people is that no matter the prophecy is given to you, if action is not initiated, prophecy is a mirage. Venture, venture is the mother of adventure. The first stage of progress is vision. The second stage is venture. The first stage of progress is vision. You must have a vision. That's the first stage of progress. You must have seen progress in life. But the second stage is venture. No matter the level of vision, if you do not take steps, your vision is a mirage. There is a concept called analysis paralysis. What I call it? Analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis is the process where you want to take a step, you overthink, you overthink. What if it doesn't work? What if it, the last time I took this step is when you are ruminating over maybe failed experiences, um, possible negative outcome, possible negative, it's called analysis paralysis. Because the more you stay on that level, the more it's hard for you to make a step. It is better, it's better to die trying than to die lying down. Take a step. Only those who make moves create way. Only those who make moves create way. Stagnant water smells. Stagnant water smells. Stagnant water smells. Am I talking to somebody here? Tell, look at somebody on your left and right. Tell them, dare to venture. <laughs> Talk to somebody, say, dare to venture. Venture is the mother of adventure. Everyone you see today who is adventurous was bettered by venture. Am I communicating now? Am I communicating now? When you become too careful, you end up being careless. Over caution is the key to under action. 
over caution, over caution, over caution, over caution, over caution. When you are too over cautious, over caution is the key to what? Under action. When you keep giving reasons why you, you can't make it, the devil will give you a, a reason to stay still. You see, that thing you fear is where your greatness lies. That thing that gives you fright and fear, that is where your greatness lies. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? That thing you fear. Everyone close to me can tell you, I like to mind my business. I'm a very private person. I, I like to stay in the room. I don't want to come down. Leave me alone. I don't like crowd. I don't like appearing before people. That's the truth. You see, when you see me preaching, you think this is my life. No. I like my privacy. I can be in a place for two months. You will know I'm there. I'll just stay in the corner and believe in my life. I like that life. And people are not aware that I'm a very shy person. Only my children know. Say, that is a shame. That is a shame. But I knew I have to be a preacher. So when I take the mic and I'm ministering, and you know the prophetic ministry is a ministry that pries into people's life. I remember the first time I prophesied on people directly, I went to them and said, what is this now? I don't like this. This is embarrassing. Those who actually... <laughs> that was my fear. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm... I remember when I was a priest somewhere, I was so ashamed. I was worshipping God, worshipping God, worshipping God. They thought I was in the spirit. No, my eyes were closed. I didn't want to open it. I was worshipping, 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 worshipping. People were tired. Somebody had to tap me. Say, preach now. When I saw him, I said, leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. How can I open my eyes and see all these people? When I opened my eyes, I, was, I saw them. They were looking at me. I said, why are they looking at me? Everybody just looking at me. I said, Jesus, they're looking at me. What do I say? I kept saying, hallelujah. Oh. They say, amen. Hallelujah. Oh. They say, amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Ah, uh -uh. as if I'm going to pray, close your eyes, close your eyes, close your eyes. <laughs> Dare to venture. Sometimes your greatest success is hidden in your fear. Where you are now is the enemy of where you are supposed to be. Where you are now is the biggest enemy of where. You are supposed to be. Peter, you see the life of Peter? I, uh, that was why, if you see Peter's life, that was why Peter stood with him till the end. Because Peter knew that favor found him. Peter's life, standing with Jesus, moving about with a sword, cutting off somebody's ear, was a proof of his gratitude that you picked me when I was washing my net. Can I say this to you? Fasting and prayer cannot solve a problem that ingratitude cost. Let a pastor carry you and pour oil on you. No, if I carry you and pour in oil, soak you with oil, you become like plantain chips. It cannot solve the problem, the infection, the virus of ingratitude. Any investment on an ingrate is a waste. You know, I personally believe that the first sin of Adam and Eve was ingratitude. Because how can you have access to a full garden? You are interested in a tiny tree. That's ingratitude. You have access to so much, but you are angry over the little you don't have access to. In ingratitude and entitlement are Siamese twins. They have a correlation, they have a semblance, they move together. Ingratitude. David, how I many of you know that Saul ran from Goliath? He couldn't kill Goliath. But David killed Goliath. But yet David ran from Saul. If David could kill Goliath, Saul was a mean smith. But David knew that his ability to stand before Goliath was premised on Saul's permission. Saul gave him that platform. So 21 times Saul attempted to kill David. But David said that we never touch God's anointed. One. Number two, this man gave me platform. We're in a generation of backstabbers and betrayers, people that forget yesterday. We are in a generation that is arrogant, a generation of short memory. Am I talking to someone here? Anyone that has blessed you in life, never fight publicly. Never. Never fight. Because every... <laughs> I, uh, 
Can I say this to you? God hates rebellion. Because rebellion and conspiracy reminds him of Satan. Whenever God says rebellion, conspiracy, it, every rebellious person, every ingrate has no future. Somebody gave you a platform. All of a sudden, you now know that the person is bad. His being evil was part of what endorsed your platform. Despite his character, despite our character, they gave you a platform. Now you now know the character has become glary because you have gotten what you want. When you, you see, when you bite the finger that fed you, listen, don't forget it fed you. The food is still inside you, it can become poison. When you bite a finger that fed you, what that finger fed you with will purge you. When you bite a finger that fed you, what that finger fed you with will purge you. A generation of entitlement. No. A generation. You see, even after Jesus left Peter, Peter remained lawyer. Can I say this to you? Three platforms on which you meet people. Number one, you meet people for a reason. Number two, you meet people for a lesson. Number three, you meet people for a blessing. If your parents that gave birth to you, that bore you, that birthed you, your father, your mother that birthed you, if they had exit out of your life, what makes you think your friends must be in your life permanently? Your mother, your father had a time in their life, they have to exit your life. But you meet some friends and think they must be with you for. That's why you have a problem. You are so clingy. You think some people must be in your life forever. So when they walk out of your life, you feel bad. No, everybody, every relationship has a time frame. When it expires, open the door. Nobody's getting me today. A generation, Peter was grateful. He toiled all night. He labored. I made declaration on that God today. Anyone who has toiled and toiled without anything to show, I decree in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, heaven will change your story. 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 If your amen is louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Can you follow him, say? Be seated. Peter was loyal to Jesus for life. His loyalty was for life. Am I communicating? Can I say this to you? If you don't appreciate what you have, it will soon become what you had. If you don't appreciate what you have, it will soon become what you had. Gratitude is altitude. Gratitude is fortitude. Only great fools are ungrateful. Only great fools are ungrateful. Learn the act of gratitude. Stop thinking you can discard people because you no more need them. No. No. Nobody is useless, no matter how tiny. If you think small things don't matter, spend the night with the mosquito. If you think small things don't matter, spend the night with mosquitoes. That hand, you refuse to clap in church. That hand, <laughs> you refuse to worship God within church. Mosquitoes will help you. It's very important to understand the mystery of gratitude. It doesn't matter. Yes, listen, and you see, uh, can I say this to you? When you want to stay happy, focus on people's strength, not their weaknesses. Uh, uh, yeah. So there are people in your life, you have a boss in the office. That boss has helped your life, has supported you, has made you what you are today. All of a sudden, one person from nowhere is telling you that your guy is using you. The person using you is paying your salary. The person using you is supporting you. That the one telling you that they are using you is not adding to your life. And you are contemplating, thinking if you are being used, you are useless. Because if you are wise, 
Enough. You should know somebody is just being envious of what you are getting, so they want to kick you. Oh, you don't know. Many so-called counsel is on the platform of jealousy. It's jealousy. Many so-called counsel. Because if the counsel is strong enough, it would have bettered your life. If somebody wants to counsel me, I first look at you. How successful are you? What have you achieved? I told you the story of how I went to pray for, we had a member in church who was having crisis with the husband and was a polygamous home. The man had several wives, about three or four wives. So I, he was beating the woman, doing everything. It was domestic violence. She was threatening to go to court and all. I said, don't, don't, don't escalate it to that level. Let me go. So I went to the man's house. And I, he, he heard I was around, so he was happy. So he opened the door. I came in. I said, how are you? Sir? I said, fine. Apostle, you came to my house. I said, yes. I said, I want to talk to you. He said, yeah, that's good. I'm interested. He sat down. He said, about what? I said, it's about your marriage. He sat well. I said, your wife is about to escalate an issue, blah, blah, blah. He said, Apostle, how many wives do you have? I said, one. He said, do you know you are not qualified to talk to me about marriage? Because I'm controlling four. You have one. I should talk to you about marriage. I said, you are correct. Too. <laughs> I wish I'm communicating here. Are you following what I'm talking about? To counsel. To talk to you, to advise you. Because they just want to ruin you. Am I communicating here? You have to take action. Don't forget, I've said this, that for, for every adventure, there must be what? Venture. You must take step. If not, you get all kinds of revelation and remain stranded. Do you know a man of God can give you revelation on business? How to run your business, you are there. Mm, speak it. Mm, ride on. As if your pastor is Okada. Ride on. Mm. If you are looking for secretaries, they are in church. Secretaries. They can take notes that they will not read. Secretaries. Paddy, paddy, repete, repete. Notes they will. <laughs> you must take steps. In marriage, steps. In business, steps. There are things to do to attract favor. Even in natural life, there are things to do to show how serious you are. On the, am I saying anything at all? A young boy and a young girl in this very church. They've married now and they've left, traveled somewhere. This church, all of a sudden, I was seeing them together. The father of the, of the girl put his foot down that they will never get married. So, and he was a leader in the church. So, the young man told me that the father has canceled the, the engagement. So, I said, why? I approved it. I'm in support. He's aware. So, I sent for the father. He came to my office. He was so excited. He said, I'm looking forward to talk to you. He said, they can't marry. I said, ah. He said, do you know, this boy has been engaged to my daughter for two years. One loaf of bread from him has not come to me. Not one handkerchief from him. Two years. Two years. He will come to the house. My wife will cook. He will sit down, eat, lick his mouth. He wouldn't even come to say he's bringing some to the house. And the man was talking. I said, Father, don't stress yourself, Daddy. It's true. I support you. The man said, I'll be. I said, yes. I've been his pastor for seven years. He has not given me one naira. <laughs> seven years. I paid the school fees in the polytechnic. I paid his rent as a student. He got a job. He did not even take one naira from the money. Say, Papa. I said, they should not marry. I stand with you, sir. I stand with you. Justice for daddy. <laughs> <laughs> And I called the young man and I spoke to him. You cannot be stingy and you're not aware. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. You can't be stingy and you're not aware. <laughs> he said, you're not aware. I don't know, I'm saying, shut up. You can't be stingy and you're not aware. <laughs> How can you say you're not aware you are stingy? St be stingy, be stingy is not a character, it's a blood group. <laughs> <laughs> it's a genotype. <laughs> How can you say you are, you are not aware? You are stingy and you don't know. Amen? Peter was living a life of labor. Jesus stepped in. 
And I began to see certain things that were triggered. I'm, I'm not preaching very long. I began to see certain things that were triggered in the life of Peter. And if you have these things in your life, you naturally will slide from one realm into another. It's very slippery. The Bible said Peter gave Jesus his boat and Jesus came and sat in. He didn't just say Jesus stood by it. Jesus sat in. Jesus sat to slide from labor into favor. Allow Jesus in your life and let him settle in. Allow him in your life. Let him settle. There are people. Jesus is the Lord of their job, but he's not the Lord of their finance. Their job. Oh, in thy morning. They do devotion. Early in thy morning. In the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I know you come from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. I, I will enter his gate. And when it comes to their finances, when it's time for offering, seed faith. They are worshiping God. Atawale, Atawale, two, one thousand. Ah, if you are, they put it back. Atawale, two, ah, two hundred. Ta. It's not the Lord of their finances. If Jesus is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. What aspect of your life have you not allowed Jesus to take over? That is why you are still in labor. Let Jesus be in charge of your marriage, in charge of your business, in charge of your health, in charge of your children. No department of your life should be shut out, should be kept away from God. If I give my life to him, I give my marriage to him. If I give my marriage to him, I give my children to him. Jesus sat on the boat. What part of your life is Jesus not sitting on? What part of your home is Jesus not sitting on? What part of your life? What part? You're in the choir. When it comes to relationship, Jesus is not. No, no, say no. This will not be sure. You have to open your eye. To shine your eye. What part? When it comes to prayer. Oh, you want God to deliver you. When it comes to counseling and the instruction. No. Papa was just talking like that. I just, I just didn't look at it. I just when they talk, I this one, I they look at like that, I they look at that. <laughs> when they look at like that, God says, we should, so, we should so see it, so, so we see it. Me, sharp guy, nobody can mugu me, oh. What aspect of your life? Am I communicating here? What aspect? Have you given him your time? Have you given everything about your life? I do crusades around the world. I spend money, mad money, having crusade to see souls saved. I walk out of that nation without a cover, without a penny, because I'm investing in the kingdom. Not a penny, not a dollar, not a cent, not one naira. Put all into the crusades. And guess what? I feel good. I feel so happy because I know there's something waiting for me. There's a reward. I feel excited when I see people healed and blessed and saved and delivered. I'm excited. We came back from a program. The driver is a pastor, great pastor, carried us in the car as he's carrying us from the, from the, that's the crusade we just had abroad in a Spanish country. And as we, as we are going from the program, he's crying. As we are coming back, he's crying. As we are going, he's crying. As we are coming back, he's crying. He said, this nation has never witnessed this. We have never seen the power of God. We believe preaching is talk and go. We didn't know you can preach and show. He said, this is the first time that we have heard somebody we say, bring the blind. That's a child that was born crippled. Born paralyzed. Take that off. Take that off. Take that off. I'm preaching. Take that off. If I'm going to do that, we won't close here today. So many of them. But what am I trying to say? I feel fulfilled. You see, God checked the content of your life, of your heart, not the container of your hand. The content. 
What is the passion? What aspect of your life? Said, no, 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 no. I know they play with money. Oh. Shush is shush. Shop is shop. We we'll do that one for shush. Money? No, sir. Even your finances, Jesus is Lord. Even the decision you will take, Jesus is Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? It's the Lord. Sometimes I've shouted on my wife over certain things. Stop that! How are you doing that? And she's quiet. Give me two minutes. I'm sending a message. I said, are you, are you okay? I can't stay. I can't. Not because I'm not a man, but I, we have a culture of the kingdom that will not allow me. She's watching now. She knows what I'm talking about. She knows. I don't wait for her to apologize to me. I reach out to her. I say, are you okay? I say, sorry about the way I, I responded. He said, no problem. She knows I will. No, it doesn't reduce my ego. I'm still a man. But there's a culture we have. Because Jesus is Lord of all. He's the Lord of my life. He's the Lord of my emotion. He's the Lord of my statement. The same house with a woman. One, one month, you're not talking to her. Jesus is not sitting yet. I'm not saying you won't get angry. Oh, come on, we are human beings now. You react. Nobody's perfect. If I tell you that at times I've not yelled at mama or screamed or said, I don't like this. And she said, let me explain. I said, no, I don't want to give you explanation. Many times. But give me two minutes. What is till evening? Evening what? What evening? Next minute you see me, I'm saying, I'm sorry, you're the way I just... You know, men do not apologize like that. They apologize around. They say, the way I just shouted just now, you okay? Don't feel bad, okay? Then when they say, oh, I bet, say, I'm sorry. So men can never... From war, what is going on? What is happening? Our family, men do not burn out. For what now? What will I tell my friends people if they call me for meeting? Now me, I'm not telling my wife, so, no, 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 let down. For war, a man is a man. There are men and there are men. <laughs> Jesus is Lord of all. It's all. That's what your children grow up to see. That's what those around you see. That's what your neighbors see. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. If he's not Lord of all, there's nothing like a white lie. A lie is a lie. Instead of you to lie, keep quiet. You are not in the court of law. So people lie for nonsense. Where did you sleep last night? London. They don't lie for nonsense. How much did you buy that shoe? One million. Oh, as you lie now, would they, as you now lie, would they, would they refund the money to you? Instead of you to lie, keep quiet. Keep quiet. How much did you buy this week? Five hundred. Forgetting we are in a generation where everything can be fact checked. Everything. They can fact check everything. Why? Issue. When you are rebuked, you are corrected. You know, one day I preached, I was preaching on the ego. I many of you remember the message I preached on the ego. I preached on the ego, preached on the ego, preached on the ego. I've told you the story before. The ego is the, is the highest bed. It has the, the highest altitude. I said all kinds of things. When I finished, a young boy, ND1, in the poly, sent me a message. He said, my daddy, I hope you will not be angry if I correct you. I said, who are you? He mentioned his name. What kind of local name like that? I said, what are you studying in school? He told me. What level? ND1. ND1. I said, okay, what is it? He said, ego is not the bed that flies the highest. You said it in church. The bed that flies the highest is the Griffon vulture. I said, eh. <laughs> he said, yes. I fact check it. The guy was correct. The Griffon vulture is the bed that has the highest altitude. I replied him, thank you, sir. He said, no, daddy. I, I'm just 17. I said, no. Who corrects you, senior? You. <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. So I corrected. Is that not an information I've learned? The Griffin vulture. I wish the media can show you that vulture so that you also learn in case you go somewhere. I've, you have learned now, now okay? Uh -huh. You have learned something now. He said the, the Griffin vulture flies the highest, has the highest altitude, not the ego. But in school those days, what they taught us, The world is evolving. We live in a modern society. 
a modest so that is why a fresh a fresh law student that just came out of the law school we floor a son in court because a modest society as it was in the beginning so shall it be world without end. That, that's not how life is now life is progressive tell somebody let Jesus sit in say that again number two to move from labor into favor increase your capacity increase your capacity he said to Peter launch out into the deep for a drought Peter was ready for a catch Jesus said no I'll give you a drought I'll give you a drought Peter just wanted few you know handful of fishes Jesus said no I'll give you more increase your capacity some of you your vision is too small your vision is too small break that shop open expand it don't just be no to sell one thing sell several things if one is not moving, another will move. Take men who are rich or women who are rich. There are multiple streams of income. Add more things. Add more things. Add more things. Add more things. Make, make your, that your, your four corner shop. Make it a mini Dubai. Have one corner for full stop. Have one corner for clothes. Have one corner for cosmetics. When people enter, they look here, look here. They are confused. Say, what do you call this shop? Everything. Everything. Increase your capacity. Increase. That's why the Igbos are rich. Anywhere an Igbo man goes to, two people are fighting. The next there's a crowd. The next you see people holding them. People are fighting. They are quarreling. They are doing. They are up to 50. An Igbo man is coming there. Bye gala, oh, bye gala. Who they fight, they chop. Pure water, pure water. Am I communicating here? Increase. Jesus said, Peter, launch out for a drought. Increase your capacity. Can I say this to you? Are you sure? <laughs> In the realm of wealth, God does not give you what you pray for. He gives you what you have capacity for. Fast and pray without capacity. It will appear God is not answering prayers. Fasting and prayer doesn't bring financial breakthrough. It's not true. It's capacity. There are many brethren in church who are not working. All they are doing is interse interse intercession. People have jobs. People are working. They stay on the altar monitoring. Like, mm, Lord, mm, I will take my woman my generation. Mm. People are working. They are not working. They stay on the altar. Oh, Lord, here am I. Send me. Where you they go? Where you they go? Send you to where? Send you to where? Send you to where? As the Lord was somebody, you know, there are jobs to do. There is, you get, you get. One of my sons who is in the choir now, who designs, Bentley designs clothes, and he's very good, very good. I remember he was here. One time I told him I'll send you to Ghana. I sent him. I said, go learn something. And today he's a master of his own. I see some people. I've seen one of my sons abroad. Where who gave you this clothes? He said, Bentley designed it. Which Bentley? And the person is in America. The person is abroad. We are in those clothes. He learned something. Now he has capacity. He can now pray on that capacity. So God now brings people. If he learned nothing, what will he pray on? No handwork. No skill. You are looking for marriage. You, you, no, you don't want to get married. You want to escape from your father's house. What some people want is not marriage. It's escape from their father's house. No job. No nothing. Stop that. What can you do? My wife is abroad now. I'll see her. She will make all the children's hair. She will sit them down, make their hair, do everything by herself. Just imagine she didn't know how to do all of that. No, I wish I'm talking to somebody here. So if, if she had not, she didn't have a husband who is blessed, she can earn money from that. Nothing you can do. Nothing, nothing. Ordinary zips, poor. Eh, charity, yo. Ordinary zip, zip, zip. That you can get needle. Share it, yo. You dare ask. My zip is poor. Bring needle. Come. You are a lady. I find it. Okay. I'm offending you now. Let me... Do something. A man, a man will not stay. A man doesn't stay at home to eat. He's always eating outside, eating outside. In fact, he has a cooler. Once he holds it in the sky, he's going out. The husband, my, the, the wife was coming. My husband doesn't like me, my phone. My husband, 
The man said, sorry, sorry. I, I kept talking to the man. Sorry. The man said, I want to talk. I want to talk. I said, my, Daddy, my wife cannot cook. It was 2006. And I said, what do you mean? He said, Daddy cannot. So I decided that day I will pay a surprise visit. I decided. They live along in Umaru Street. So I was driving. I just drove down there, stopped over, called the man. I said, I'm outside. Yeah, come inside. I came inside. I said, Mother, I want it. Brethren. Ioma. <laughs> when I put spoon and I put the food in my mouth. Now, this was supposed to be rice. I was chewing sand. I was chewing salt. I had my mouth like she was there. I didn't want to embarrass her, but I didn't want to die. Of course, I didn't want to make her feel bad, but I was. She refused to leave. I had to point out. I, I didn't want to do that, but she was staying for the Lord. My mouth, the salt, the sand. So when I poured it out, I turned to the man. I said, I better be eating outside. <laughs> I said, Madam, go back and learn. I have to be on this thing I ate. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let's pray. Let's pray. That guy was in trouble. You want to get married now. As a lady, you are waiting for God to bring the partner. This is the time to be learning everything you can learn. So that when that man marries, he's not marrying a wife, he's marrying an industry. When he said this, I can do it. So, I can sew. Say, hey, I can make. This, I can do. That, ah, what, do you, what do you not have to do? Say, my husband, I prepare for you. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I communicating here? Increase your capacity. Go back and learn. Unlearn. Is that what they say about the 21st century graduates? That the biggest problem with the 21st century graduate, they refuse to learn, unlearn, and relearn. I do certificate courses online, me. Last week I was doing a Zoom, a Zoom conference. Not Bible. Not Bible. A Zoom conference. I was talking to on entrepreneurship. And I was paid when his Bible is free. When it's anything outside Bible, you pay. I charged them, they paid me one hour to be with them. And I was there live and they were asking questions. No Bible, no script. If all I know is only the Bible, they asked me, entrepreneur. I said, eh, in Matthew, they say, eh, entrepreneurship. Eh, in Malachi chapter, no, sir. You've got to increase your capacity. That's what determines your preparation, determines your audience. Start preparing now. Do you, am I talking to somebody here? When I'm waiting, sometimes I want to fly and I have layovers, three hours, four hours, five hours. I'm sitting in the lounge, I don't waste. I go online. I learn five hymns, six hymns. I go online. I learn worships, worship songs. I go, I don't waste the time. I learn songs. I learn worship. I read. I discover things about, I get health tips. I get business tips. I get strategy tips. Not to sit down, you're browsing, surfing the net, following one, one platform that is carrying one story that does not help your life, that does not add anything to you. Am I talking to somebody here? When I raise a song, I'll join them. They raise a song, Dad, you know everything. I say, that's what I do. I learn. I learn. I learn. When you stop learning, you start dying. Increase your capacity, sir. Enlarge your coast. Expand your tentacles. Enlarge your desire. I wish I was talking to somebody. Don't just dream to be a banker. Dream to be a bank owner. Don't aspire to pay your rent. Aspire to be a landlord. Increase your capacity. Begin to work towards it. When others are thinking about how to pay rent, you are thinking of how to own a house. I might think of somebody. Here. Yes, somebody taught you how to fish, but target being the owner of the pond. Increase your capacity. Increase your capacity. 
increase your capacity. Stop thinking small. Small dreams shrink you. Big dreams stretch you. Small dream, increase your dream. Increase your vision. Have a global vision. Because your global vision will give you the mental preparation. We give you, I told you about Arnold Schwarzenegger. You watch the movie called Commando. You see that guy? Called Terminator, right? Yeah. He was governor of California at the time. He wanted to become Mr. World. He wanted to build up himself. He was doing 5,000 push-ups a day. Sir, you know to be 5,000 press-up? Money till night is there. You do up to 300, 500, you get that rest. Do again. Re when he came out on the stage and took off his clothes, the judges didn't need to ask. They said, you win, you win. With this kind of body, he was lifting weights, running, doing all that because he wanted to be the most outstanding bodybuilder. Why? He had the world vision. Increase your capacity. Stop thinking small. You may come from a mud house, but in you is a modern house. The Bible says you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill. Jesus called you a city. Don't die a village. Jesus called you a city. Don't die a village. A city set upon a hill. You are a global figure. You are a global material. This your craft is a global one. This business is a global one. Am I talking to somebody here? In that your business, after you leave this place, go and put global by the side. That business name, put global. Put international. I might talk to somebody. Your name is Kenneth. Somebody say, ah, Kenneth, tell him, add international. Ah, Paula, add global. You are a worldwide figure. You are more than where you come from. Where you come from does not, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm wasting your time. Let me round up. Am I talking to somebody here? from your language, from your statement, your action. If you don't have it now, it means it's coming. Call it forth. That there's no money in your bank account doesn't mean you are broke. That there's no money in your bank account doesn't mean you are stranded. Call it forth. Faith does not say things as they are. It says them as they should be. We don't live by our experience. We live by our expectation. When men say there is a cast down, thou shalt say! Hallelujah! I walked, into a, a, I walked into the office of a president one time and he was talking. I was quiet. When he was done, I asked a few questions. I, was, I sat all through. They asked me if I would drink something. I was quiet. I never knew he was observing me. After about 10 minutes, he said, you are very presidential. I said, sir, he said, you are very presidential. I said, can you explain? He said, I've hosted pastors. I studied that demeanor, the appearance. He said, but your comportment, your calmness, your questions... You allow me feeling. You're not saying God told me. I said, hold on. God, God is speaking. Hold on. God. I said, no. You don't. I said, sir, you don't talk to a president like that. You allow a president finish talking. Express his view. From his view, you give your opinion. From that view, you ask a question. I had to find out how they talk to presidents. If not, I would have gone there. More grace, sir. <laughs> More grace, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sir, this, this palace is wonderful. Wow. Eh, 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 eh. You don't talk like that. You don't talk like that. You must know how to address kings so that you don't carry a slave mentality into the palace. Am I might talk to somebody here? Start it doesn't matter if you are stranded. Can I say this to you? If you can carry your mind to the palace, your body will follow you there. Rise up, I want to close. <laughs> rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. My time is up. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Rise up, rise up. Oh. That's too brief, right? To be continued. Everything you become in life is a function of what God has made you. No man can help himself. You know one of the things I like about Nigerian movies? With all the witchcraft and everything they display in the movie. At the end of the movie, to God be ah whenever I see that I respect that with everything because everything we become in life I like what Paul said I am what I am by the grace of God don't see stop commonizing yourself don't don't commonize who God has specialized God calls you special can I say this to you 
God does not see you in your current state. He sees you in your final status. God sees you in your final, final status. It doesn't matter what people say about you. What he says is what stands. Aya. Aya. Who shut up? Ah! The problem people have in their lives. You see, I just had something from the Holy Spirit. Some of us need to repent from the sin of ingratitude. You have to repent from the sin of what? If you don't value what you have, it will soon become what you had. He picked you. He found you. You see, when God looked at a man like David and said, a man after my heart, God saw the quality of gratitude. I'm going to take two prayers, briefly. Briefly. Very briefly. I, I have less than 20 minutes to do this. Everything I'm doing, less than 20 minutes. We're going to take two prayers. The first prayer we're going to pray is, Lord, deliver me, not just to man, to God. Some of us have been ungrateful to God. Not just man, even God. The one who kept you alive, the one who kept you through the night. One little challenge, you're asking if God, are you still alive? Did you kill him? Any sin of ingratitude, show me mercy. Ungrateful. Lord, every sin of ingratitude in my life, show me mercy. Say, my father, my father. Shout it loud and clear. My father, my father, my father, father. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. Every sin of ingratitude. Every sin of ingratitude. Show me mercy. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. <laughs> in Jesus name amen I'll continue this message next service. But let me say this to you. God found you out of the rest. Not because you qualify. Not because. Amos said, I was not a prophet nor a prophet's son. Sometimes I see the hand of God upon my life. I say, God, my father's not a pastor. I wasn't, I mean, Nothing like ministry, but you just helped me. I can't take credit. I can't. Whatever you are, you are today, any privilege you enjoy, somebody's better. And that's why you must be very careful because if you mess up God as a backup, if human body, God can have spare parts, human body, therefore human being, God has replacement. If for human body, God can have spare parts, and for human beings, God have replacement. You see, when things happen around you, or people do things, it's for you to learn. Don't just talk about it. Learn. I discovered in this ministry, as I pastor in our branches around the world, when a pastor gets angry, I mean, few of them are angry with me. Many of them are angry with other people in the ministry. Some who have left this church are angry with ushers. Some are angry with people. Only few are angry with me directly. So when people leave a particular place, I discover the person that comes next does the kind of things I never thought was possible. We 
When you see such things, you begin to learn. Even me, I learn. I learn. I've had churches in places, I never even knew what it means for them to honor a father. As far as I was concerned, the church is just doing well. And the person just got angry with another senior pastor. The way this pastor talked to me, Papa is never intervening, I'm leaving. And they leave. Somebody steps in. And the person initiates a process, say, let's take care of our father. Up to yesterday, somebody sent my house light bill, right? He has been doing it for months. He said, that's Papa's light bill. Another will say, fire nine, this for this home. Another will say, this one is for this. This one is for my father. That one is for this. And I had people there for years. I never knew it was, there's anything, anybody. I, I just felt, I've done for you, go. So when I see that, I begin to learn. That Johnson Suleiman, the day you become arrogant and proud, God can pick a better person. There is nobody that is irreplaceable. Nobody is indispensable. When a new person comes, he will learn from your failure. What you didn't do, he will improve on it. So that he can hold that position and sit very well. This pride, this, this I'm qualified for it, is a downfall. We're going to pray a prayer right now. Father, exceed my expectations. Between now and the end of the month, exceed my expectation. Between now and the end of the month. What? See, for God to exceed your expectations, you must have expectations. Lord, exceed my expectations. Are you ready? Say, my father, my father. My, my father, father, my father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Between now. Between now. And the end of the month. And the end of the month. Lord. Lord. Exceed my expectations. Exceed my expectations. Open your mouth and fire prayers. Open your mouth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we bless your name. Wave your hands to the Lord. And begin to thank him. Between now and the end of the month, he will do something that will shock you. Beyond your expectation. Beyond your expectation. Even before I ask, Jehovah Nisi answered me. To be Chuku, he has done it again. He has taken away my pain and given me peace so of mind. Oh. To be Chuku, he has done it for me. See the way. 